Wizard! The squishiest, least physically inclined book form that dominates the playfield through sheer brain spasms and fireballs. From casting simple illusions to conjuring ice fields to exploding things and raising your grandma. If it's magic, wizard will learn it and replicate. Except healing. Gods forbid the fucking wizard actually learns how to keep someone alive for once. That aside, wizard is one of those classes that would actually get worse if you decided to multi-class. And yes, it's super funny to have a muscle wizard. But generally speaking, the class is all about casting spells and it's best at it. Well, that is in utility and variety, though maybe not in the max damage. For that, sorcerer takes the cake. Fundamentally, Wizard is a prepared spell caster, so every morning while on the shitter, the old man decides what spells he's gonna use that day, and not forget to pull his dangling testicles before flushing. However, in Baldur's Gate you can swap out spells as long as you're not in combat. The basic idea of the class, like dragon hoarding all the dice, <laughs> precious. My precious. to pick and choose what you're gonna use. Meaning that Wizard, with few exceptions, like the fuck Healing magic! Well, no, almost all magic and spells he could get his grubby hands on, but could only use a select portion. It's like a goldfish with 100 IQ. This basically means that for the most part, whether or not you fuck up or save the day as a wizard is trying to <coughs> divinate the future, so to speak. Uh, you have to foretell what troubles you may encounter that day. You have to educatedly guess what's coming. Basically, pay attention, damn it! As for the equipment, well, the wizard will explode if you so much as look at the fucker funny. Best you'll get is a walking stick and you'll be happy. All of that is to say that you barely have any weapons or armor and health is rock bottom low. So, you know where you should stand? Not on the fucking front lines, that's for sure! Like the class itself, it's time for us to pound books and learn knowledge. To know how a wizard operates is to know how spellcasting works in the first place. So, let's say you're new to D&D. Welcome to mathematics homework hell! Now let's say you played World of Warcraft, Diablo, Dark Souls, and pretty much any game with mana pool for mages. Step 1. Take the forget potion. That's not how magic works in D&D. In D&D you have spells, these spells have levels, and your character has spell slots. Now imagine me punching whoever came up with this term in the face and striking out the name spell slots and replacing it with spell bullets. However many bullets you have, that many times a day you can shoot spells. Also, you can shoot spells of lower level with higher level bullets, but not vice versa. Oh, but seriously, it's so good to have Baldur's Gate to literally provide examples of how this shit works, so y'all at least have some basic idea what the fuck d and is trying to do for its magic system. Fuck me, I'm off the rails already. Right, as a wizard, that's basically what you do. You just pick spells that work and try not to fuck it up that day. There are no hidden abilities and what have you. Except when you do. But we'll cross that burning bridge when they ingested enough bleach. So, let's jump in. Alright, jumping off the bridge like a post-grad student, Wizard is fucked. First you take as high as possible intelligence and then pray for mercy. Now, of course, maxing out constitution and dexterity to both survive and avoid even the lightest touch, probably a good idea, but you know what's the best way to avoid damage? It's to simply not stand where the damage is! Anyways, wizards also get this cool feature, arcane recovery. Basically, it's extra spell slots to prolong your usefulness. And at this point, pretty much everything else that follows is a spell description, not what features the class gets, so prepare your anus. The knowledge enema is coming! Cantrips, Firebolt, Frost Ray, and Minor Illusion are standard decent picks. And for the love of god, do not ever pick Blade Ward, Dancing Lights, or True Strike. Even in Baldur's Gate, they're colossal trash. Alright, as for the real spells. Now, first, you have to remember that Wizard can learn spells. All it takes is a bit of money and you get plenty of it. So, at this point on the level up, the first couple of spells you pick up are just shortcuts and nothing else. But, as for the spells themselves, and to save you some time, here's the shit list and the great list. Here I have to remark just how great the magic missile is. Since in Baldur's Gate you can see the enemy health, it makes the spell super hyper efficient at finishing off enemies without wasting or risking anything. I deem this the best level 1 spell for the class. But as for the real damage dealer, Chromatic Orb really is good. It's in fact so good that you don't need to cast level 2 spells and instead just upcast this one. Oh, and for you nerds, upcasting is using a higher level spell bullet for a lower level spell. Level 2, it's time to pick your Hogwarts house. For the most part, no matter which school you pick, all the wizards can do all the things, uh, with few exceptions. And you're not limited to any of the spells. Oh god, in that case, Divination Wizard would be completely fucked. 
Anyway, speaking of specific school will reduce the cost of gold needed to learn those spells. But realistically speaking, you won't feel it. Instead, in the interest of saving some time, Abjuration has the magic condom that protects oneself or in later levels, others. It's a very good pick. Conjugation. Trash tier, except for level 10 feature, but still, it's not worth dropping 10 levels in it. Divination. Fuck you, are in Jesus, I hate your dice rolling. The best subclass, including in D&D. Enchantment. Charms and twin spell with limits. Honestly, at this point, either play bard or sorcerer, not this trash. Evocation. Fireball! <laughs> Illusion, a divination wizard with broken legs. Uh, not a terrible pick, though. Necromancer, the weirdo in the group, but the fun kind. You don't care about min-maxing, you just want to be this guy. Good day, I'm Bob the Necromancer, and today we're doing an unboxing. Transmutation, your neighborhood's meth cook, and also a shitty druid, and the shittiest wizard too, so throw it in the dumpster. Level 3, more arcane charges, spell slots, and more importantly, level 2 spells. Now to save you some time, these are the soaked tampon spells, and these are the good ones. Most notably, Hold is probably the best, and Missing Step is extremely useful. Even in D&D, where you could not cast this and a leveled spell in the same turn. It still holds up perfectly. Level 4, the Foot Fetish. Now, yes, you could pick Spell Sniper for some reason, but you don't really need it. Warcaster helps more, and of course, Score Pumping is the best. Oh, and hey, this is the first instance where Magically Adept could be useful, so you can learn that healing. Level 5, more of the same magic stuff, but more importantly, level 3 spell. Again, these are the rapid abortions, and like the Granny's Ashes, they go into the dump, and these are the good ones. Of course, here we get the... <laughs> In Baldur's Gate, it's actually kinda nerfed a little, but even so, Lightning Bolt also, depending on the situation, could be better. Either which one deals great damage. And of course, Haste, at least in Baldur's Gate, is a fantastic boost for everyone. Level 6, each school gets an extra. Now for this, just like with the Cleric, I'm gonna focus on the better half, that you'd actually think to pick up. Abjuration can project the protective magic condom onto others as a reaction. So remember kids, safety is very good to have. Otherwise you create mistakes like yourself. Divination gets a very different feature from the tabletop and arguably overpowers the class, allowing you to regain the potent dice on top of getting another one. Evocation's cantrips fucks harder. And necromancy finally gets good. Level 7, more Hocus Pocus, but better yet, level 4 spells. These are shit, and these are da shit. Personally, Wall of Flame is a hell of a spell, even in the worst situations. Level 8, Ability Score, Lucky, a Spell Sniper if you're desperate, Warcaster if you haven't already picked it, and Elemental Adept if you really want to max out that elemental damage. But for real though, Pumping Intelligence and Warcaster probably are the best ones. Level 9, 5th level spells. These are the dumpster babies, and these are what you want to pick. Cloud Kill, not only a super deadly AoE, with the same damage as a Wall of Fire, but the ability to recast it at no cost makes it an amazing spell. But Dominate Person could be better. However, that one has a chance to fail. Level 10, all the other kids with the bumped up kicks. Oh, sorry, I was thinking about American schools for some reason. Anyways, each school gets its final bonus. Abjuration gets a short rest recharge bonus for the magic condom, Divination gets fuck all, Evocation gets the real damage boost for the evocation spells, and Necromancer unboxed your grandpa. Oh, sorry, I mean uh, gets a fairly boring passive. Level 11, 6th level spells. This is where the real fun begins. Literally every spell, minus the arcane gate and circle of death, is either good or amazing. Disintegrate is just a massive fuck you laser, but can fail spectacularly. Sunbeam for 10 turns turns into your death laser. Hell, even Wall of Ice that is a reskinned Wall of Stone actually deals great damage, and Chain Lightning makes me come. You get the point, all of them are fantastic, except for those two. And finally, at 12, you don't care about the feat anymore, all you want is that extra spell slot to cast another Disintegrate. And that's the wizard. For the most part, you'll be hunting for spell scrolls to fill out your imaginary book that in Baldur's Gate does not exist. But be you playing D&D or Baldur's Gate, remember to pick useful spells for what is to come. And in D&D, don't be afraid to take the long rest to reprepare spells. The way you play both games is to cheese, frustrate and outsmart the DM's bullshit most of the time. <laughs> Oh my god! It's literally five spells and done. Even so, remember that you're playing with the DM, and as a wizard, ask for spell scrolls, prepare your own, know the magic, and of course, 